this is quite interesting. This is a vending machine for vegetable. Fresh vegetable. Fresh vegetable. Quite a cool idea. Okay, good morning, good morning, good morning. Okay, hi, you're watching Greg Speed Eats and I'm here outside Golden Mount Tower. I think you already know what restaurant I'm going to talk about. Lab. The restaurant logo is right outside Golden Mount Tower, as you can see. So, Golden Mount Tianqi Steamboat Restaurant has been in operation since 1952. It has been the go-to eatery for traditional Hainanese food for many in the Hainanese community and for people looking for relatively authentic, traditional Hainanese food. This is even more true in current times, as the stable of authentic Hainanese restaurants, right, have been getting smaller and smaller, especially with the closure of other iconic Hainanese eateries, la, like Yat Khan and Moi Chin in 2020. Okay, founded by Mo Taijin, and originally located at Middle Road, opposite the original location of Sui Ki Chicken Rice, Tian Ki shifted to the basement of Golden Mount Tower in 1978, where it is still located today, right here. Back in the 1950s, the restaurant only sold Hainanese zhita dishes and chicken rice, and Taijin introduced steamboat into the menu because of customer requests. The story goes that Taijin always ate his dinner late, and he didn't like cold food, so he would use leftover stock to boil ingredients in it. Customers saw what he did and started requesting for it. As the business became bigger and bigger, Taijin recruited his family members and turned it into a family-run business. It is now run by the second generation Mo Chuanze. Now in his 30s, he has been helping out in the family business ever since he was 13 years old. So if you've never been to Tianqi before, right, it is quite a throwback to yesteryear as it has a really old school decor that looks like it hasn't changed since the 1990s. Wooden beams on the ceiling, square mini mosaic tiles on the wall, faded brown floor tiles, green plastic chairs and round folding tables. The staff look like they have been working at the restaurant for decades. Lah. You'll also realise that most of them will be speaking in Cantonese too. So, uh, come let's have a taste. Actually, we can't have a taste yet. Lah. They're not open. They open in about half an hour, so we just have to wait. Yeah, so, so one mix, one beef, one big prawn. Okay, okay, okay. okay, okay. Okay, I basically placed my order here and I basically ordered their main attraction, which is their Hainanese steamboat. So it's like $34 for small and it's $50 for large, I believe, still. And it's a version of local steamboat which seems to have almost disappeared in Singapore ever since China-style hot pots became all the rage about a decade or so in Singapore. And there are three variations of the steamboat set on the menu. You can either order two plates of mixed ingredients, one plate of mixed and one plate of marinated beef, or a plate of mix and a plate of big prawns. So um, I managed to sort of like talk to them and I managed to get basically one of each lah, so that you have an idea of what everything is. Lah. So what I ordered is the uh, mixed plate, which is right here. And the mix comes with an assortment of ingredients. Lah. Um, as you can tell, there's fish balls, uh, prawns, liver, cockles, sliced fish, sliced pork, fish more. Yeah, there's some fish more. There's some, what else is there? Oh, there's some squid as well. Then the beef, which is this one right over here. And then the uh, prawns, which is uh, jumbo prawns, large tiger prawns. Jumbo tiger prawns, are, which is, uh, it gives it in halves. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So eight, uh, eight. so that's four jumbo prawns lah, right over here. Okay. Also what we have, we have this, which is the tofu skin. You have three eggs, which I'll show you uh, what they do, lah, you know, afterwards. Then you have the furu, which is fermented bean curd. And the chili sauce right here. Mm. And I ordered one rice, because if you want some carbs, right, they just order the chicken rice here. Lah. Okay. And they gave me, uh, well, three plates of vegetables. 
So everything looks and feels very, very fresh. Lah. And apparently no overnight food is served to customers. In the past, they used to give out quail eggs. But due to high cholesterol, they have since substituted it for chicken eggs. Lah. Which I think is a mistake personally. They should actually bring back the quail eggs. Lah. Because actually there are a lot of recent studies which actually show that high cholesterol is actually good for your health. I'll put some links to the studies down in the description below. Lah. So. Okay, okay, I just checked with them and they don't actually have tang o, lah, which is um, unfortunate. It is called garland chrysanthemum leaves lah, and it actually adds a musky vegetable flavour to the soup. Lah. It is an essential ingredient lah, for steamboat especially, but um, they don't have it, so what to do? Okay, so first I'm going to try the stock on its own. Lah, okay? Well, this is like amazing. Okay, so the chicken stock soup here is made from boiling old mother hens uh, for a sweeter stock for about six to eight hours and there's no MSG added. Eating it on its own, the flavour of the soup is very clean with just a pure taste of chicken and a bit of salt added. Lah. Many customers will stick to this light chicken stock soup base and use the chicken rice chilli sauce as a dipping sauce. Oh, mm, I mean, the chili sauce is fantastic. La. It's lightly spicy and garlicky, uh, with rough chopped chili, and it's got very bold savory notes and maybe a bit of a sour note, la, but not too much. So, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to blanch the beef and I'm going to dip it in the chili sauce. Okay. something like that okay I'm gonna blanch it a little bit more just to cook it a little bit because it's still like raw in bits lah. So. and that looks much better as you can tell. Mm. Mm. just nice beef very plain nice flavor of the beef itself and a bit of a stock and that's it wonderful but here's where the magic happens when you dip it in the chili sauce. With that, absolutely fantastic. So everything was delicately flavoured. You can taste the beef, you can taste the stock. So if you add the chili sauce itself, right, you get the beef plus the stock, plus the flavour of the chili sauce, and you can taste all three. And so this is gradual build up of flavour and it doesn't ever get too intense. It's wonderful. Lah. In Chinese hot pots, right, the stock tends to be thicker, more flavorful, and more robust. But the chicken based stock at Tianqi is more subtle in flavor. And that's a good thing as it gives the stock room to develop into a richer broth as the steamboat gets populated with ingredients and stock refills. So, the other way to approach the steamboat stock is to do it how the Hainanese do it. Lah. They will add a big dollop of furu, fermented tofu, red rice yeast tofu, into the soup base. And they will also add beat up eggs, lah. Um, sort of like egg drop style. And they will swirl it around before adding any other ingredient. So, this is what I'm going to do. Okay. So, what I'm going to do is to crack the eggs first. Lah. Okay. And mix it a bit. But first, I'm going to add the furu in. Lah.
So it is kind of like a slightly reddish egg drop soup. Lah. Well, the soup alone, ah, they can just drink this. Forget about the ingredients. No need ingredients. So now the flavour gets much more intense and robust. A mix of the chicken stock and fermented tofu and the egg gives the soup um, added texture and flavour. Amazing. Oh, it's almost like a very nice, firmish, soft boiled egg. This okay, so one we're going to do now is that, oh, let's see, I'm going to get a fish ball, okay? And then I'm just going to dip it in. And maybe some pork as well. Mm. Oh. So with most steamboats, you normally need a dipping sauce on the side to boost the flavour a bit. Lah. But because of the furu, right, the flavour is actually quite nice and full. You know, you don't actually need any sauce to go along with it. But let's try blanching a few things lah, and yeah, then uh, dipping it in the chilli sauce. So let's try, I don't know, the fish. We have some fish here, as you can see. Yeah, I'm going to add it in the chilli sauce. Perfection. You can taste the stock, you can taste the fish, you can taste the chilli sauce. It's great. And it's fresh as well. Let me show you this. Uh, this is the egg which I fished out. And mm. it's all like became mixed with the full roller. But it is like the softest egg you've ever had in your life. It's a bit overcooked, but it is still very, very soft. And it's wonderful. Oh, wonderfully soft. Really amazing. Now, sadly, the restaurant doesn't offer the option of full rule, nor do they label it anywhere in the menu. So you have to know that they do do this and ask for it when you order the steamboat. So, trying the rest of the ingredients. The pork liver. Since this is liver, it is best to blanch very lightly to preserve that bouncy liver texture. Lah. <laughs> what more do I need to say? Perfectly blanched, if I must say. Slightly bouncy, slightly creamy. Next, the raw cockles. There we go, that's about right. I put it in a bowl. Maybe I add just a bit of chilli sauce into it. It's got a very fresh cockle flavour and just lightly blanched to give it a bit more bounce and yeah, the chilli sauce. Oh, fish maw. Found some sea cucumber inside. Mm. Nice and bouncy texture, firm with a bit of softness inside. Some squid over here. Just a bit of bounce, still fresh, simply amazing. Tofu skin roll. What can I say? Tofu skin roll. Tofu flavour, fried oil richness. It's got that unusual bouncy texture to it. Abalone. These are abalones in a can and they slice it, I believe so. Mm. 
great seafood flavor, bouncy texture. Oh. Now as for the prawns, right? These are the prawns you get in the mixed platter. And they're decent looking medium prawns of sorts. Fairly sweet, wonderful prawn texture, quite bouncy actually. And when you order the giant prawns, so this is what it looks like. This has definitely got prawn sweetness. Mm. The texture is much nicer. So as for the vegetables, right, you get Chinese cabbage. And, and the more you add inside, right, the more it will actually sweeten the soup. Lah. And one plate becomes one bowl. Just tasting the soup halfway through, right? And even after stock refills and whatever, the stock is amazingly robust now. But still very clean. Wonderful. Okay, finished, but let me show you the soup. Huh? Mm. Okay, this is what the soup has become. Okay? So the soup has become very, very flavorful. Lah. Extremely flavorful very intense, saltier, but not too salty. It depends on how fast you eat your meal. Lah. When you eat it faster, um, it's going to be not as salty. If you take your time, a lot of stock refills and so on and so forth, right? It's going to be way too salty. But it never gets to the point of um, a China hot pot level, lah, where at the end of any meal, the remaining stock is, is way too flavorful, way too salty, and you just can't drink it. Lah. You know, this one you can. So this was a look at the Hainanese steamboat offerings at Tianqi. But I'll be back to talk about the other iconic dishes which the Hainanese are known for. So, see you in a few days. Okay, I'm back at Tianqi and today I've ordered the Hainanese chicken rice. Ah. Yeah, he's now cutting up the chicken. Lah. They've already given me the minced ginger and chili sauce. Ah. So, um, yeah, we have to just wait. Sisi. Ah. Oh, Sisi. Ah. Smells so good. Ah, this is here. So, I ordered half a chicken. And then they gave me some soup over here. And there's the rice. They gave me some minced ginger. And again, I have their fantastic chili sauce. Lah. The chili sauce which you have for the steamboat is the same as for the chicken rice. Okay, so trying the chicken first. Okay, let's try some of the breast meat. <laughs> so good, right. Okay, the delicate chicken flavour really takes centre stage here. And it's got a small drizzle of soy sauce on the meat to boost the flavour a bit. The soy sauce is savoury and it's not sweet at all. That said, right, the meat is cooked through. It's got a bit more of a hardier meat texture. Lah. And the older generation like it that way. Now I'm going to try a non-breast meat one and I'm just going to try a... Uh, let's take a bony bit. Dark meat, meat close to the bone and some skin on top. Yeah. Really fantastic chicken, oh my god. There's so much natural chicken flavour here, it's amazing. The restaurant actually switched over to a special breed of um, French poulet chickens like, a few years back and they have a hardier texture and a more distinct chicken flavour. Oh, I'll show you this. Uh. You can tell that the fat has actually uh, been jellified. Like. There you see? That is the jellified fat in between the skin and the meat. Pretty amazing. 
So how you get this jellified fat is basically that after they actually poach the chickens, right, they dunk it into ice water or they dunk it into cold water so that it actually uh, stops the cooking process and the fat actually becomes jelly. Lah. So it's got this unique texture and it's really nice and mm, oh, this is even better. Oh my god, look at this. <laughs> it's so good. It just makes for a richer bite because the fat hasn't actually um, come out of the chicken and it's got this jelly-like texture and there's a lot more chicken fat flavour as a result. And it's richer, it's just wonderful. Okay now, um, trying the rice. Oh, there's quite a decent amount of oil richness and there's a, like a chicken, maybe a chicken stock flavour. It isn't too highly salted and the texture is sort of like uh, in the middle. It's got a soft uh, with a bit of a toothy bite. La. So the chicken itself is actually flavoursome but it's lightly flavoured and the rice is actually lightly flavoured. So here's where the flavour actually comes in. La. The chilli sauce, which is the restaurant's original recipe which, which hasn't changed since the 1950s. La. The sauce acts as the main flavour booster for the chicken rice. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a bit of chicken right here, a bit of rice and a bit of the chilli sauce on top. Moderately spicy and garlicky with rough chopped chilli. Quite a decent big savouriness with a bit of uh, tanginess inside. It doesn't ever get over flavoured. Depending on how much chilli you put on, right? You can still taste the rice, you can still taste the chicken, and you can taste the chilli. And it's all in one bite. It's amazing. The other thing they give you is that they give you some minced ginger on the side. Mm. It's just pure minced ginger, that's it. And it's a bit watery, but it's still very nice. It's like ginger juice. You know, it is completely unseasoned. It's a good thing because it doesn't actually overcomplicate the flavour. Like. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to take one more piece of chicken. I'm going to add some of the soy sauce here. And I'm just going to add the ginger on top. There we go, see? Mm. <laughs> oh. It's like two delicate flavours, the chicken and the rice, and then with that ginger on top. It sort of like combines for a slightly stronger flavour, but it's not a heavily savoury flavour. There's just a lot of herb flavour inside. It's wonderful. What I'm going to do is that I'm going to take chicken. Okay, I'm going to put some rice on top. A big portion this time. Some chilli. And some ginger. Oh, this looks great! Absolutely explodes in the mouth. <laughs> this is amazing. Even with all four things combined, the chicken, the rice, the ginger and the chilli, right? You can taste every element there. And you still can taste the chicken, you can taste the rice, you can taste the ginger, you can taste the chilli. There's an increased flavour, but nothing actually dominates. Lah. Pretty amazing. Okay, if you're worried about vegetables, right? They give you some cucumber with some of the green stuff off and some spring onions and some parsley. Lah. So, there is still a little bit of veg. Okay, some soup. I presume that this is the same soup that they actually use to actually put inside the steamboat, but let's see. Yeah. Very clear. Mmm, smells very chickeny. Oh, amazing. Yep, this is the soup which they put inside the steamboat. Lah. And it's very pure, very soulful. It's not too strong either. And it's slightly salted and there's a bit of a spring onion flavour inside. I have to stress that this dish is actually a very delicately flavoured dish. Lah. So if you want it to be stronger flavoured, right, the only option you have is to just add more chilli. So those who like strong flavours, right, bear that in mind. Lah. This dish is not for you. Okay, finished. So that was a look at the Hainanese chicken rice from Tinky. And I'll be back here for a third and final time to try two more of their iconic Hainanese dishes. Lah. The Hainanese pork chop and the Hainanese satay. So, see you in a few days. Okay, so I got my order of Hainanese pork chop and Hainanese satay. Okay, first, uh, tucking into the Hainanese pork chop and try the meat itself.
Mm-hmm. 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 The meat is cut into large chunks and it's thicker than normal. Lah. There's also a little bit of fat in the Hainanese pork chop, which is very, very welcome, very nice. And it has a decently moderate crunch to the batter. Lah. And the covering is quite thin too. The tenderness of the pork can be a little hit and miss. Lah. Sometimes it is a bit drier, sometimes it is more moist, so it depends. Lah. It depends on the piece. This is towards the end. Mm -hmm. so, the ends are crispier, obviously, and more dry. But the inside, look at this. That looks like a nice moist piece there. Mm. Much more moist. Mm. The seasoning is on the light side. It's very, very slightly salted, but that's it really. The main flavour is actually the tomato sauce on top. Lah. Okay, so just try the sauce. Ah. Oops. Mm. The flavours are light, slightly tangy, very, very slightly savoury and very, very lightly tomatoey and a very, very small hint of sweetness, that's it. You can taste the onion and pea flavour inside. So next, the Hainanese satay. Of course, no old school Hainanese experience would be complete without a plate of Hainanese satay. Lah. I have a more detailed explanation on the differences between Hainanese satay and Malay satay in this vlog. So if you're interested, you can click on the link above, lah, uh, right over there or there, to actually watch it. For Hainanese satay at this restaurant, right, they only serve the pork version and I ordered 10 and it comes with um, two bowls of peanut sauce and some uh, chopped cucumber lah. over here as you can see mm -mm -mm. so the sati at Tianqi comes from a supplier and instead of a charcoal grill they use a Japanese style yakitori griller but the results are actually pretty impressive so just try the sati alone see they have got three pieces plus a bit of fat in between hmm Mm -hmm. So each stick of satay has got pretty generous chunks of pork lah, and it's grilled to a slight char and it's got soft grilled fat and moist meat. Pretty good. Lah. The texture of the meat is on the meatier side and the flavour of the meat itself, right, again, is on the light side. Very lightly sweet, very lightly savoury and even the spice and chilli levels right, are also um, very, very held back. Now, the satay sauce itself, the satay sauce is actually different from the Hainanese sauce that I've encountered lah. Because normally they put pineapple puree inside, but here they don't. So trying it on its own, right? Mm. Mm. Full of peanuts. Thicker than most peanut sauces and spicier too. It's oil rich, not too sure what sort of oil they use, but it's probably vegetable oil. Mm. And the peanut sauce is very, very full, very, very thick, not watery at all. The flavour is very delicately sweet too. So taking the satay with the satay sauce. Mm. It's very interesting because the fat texture and the meat texture, right, they're on the firmer side rather than being overly soft, right, which is very, very nice. Okay, finished. So that was a look at Golden Mao Tianqi, which is one of the last remaining Hainanese restaurants that is still in business in Singapore. Lah. And this restaurant is incredibly popular. They get a healthy crowd here, lah, whether or not it's on the weekdays or the weekend. But would I travel half across Singapore to eat here? Almost definitely. I mean, all the Hainanese favourites people look forward to are on the menu. And they are very nicely done here. Lah. The steamboat, of course, is the big highlight here. But that said, I do have a small bone to pick about a couple of their dishes. The Hainanese pork chop could be a bit more moist, and sometimes it can be a bit dry. And the steamboat, I mean everything is nice, but it is perhaps lacking a little bit of fat flavour. There's no fat anywhere in their steamboat ingredients. The beef is very lean, and there's seafood which has no fat, and the stock is very clean, not much oil. The only the pork has a little bit of fat on it. Lah. So if you want more fat or oil richness, right, you do get it in the chicken rice rice if you order it. But aside from these small niggles, ah, everything else is great in my opinion. The food is solidly grounded in tradition and is more or less immune to current trends. Lah. And because of that, the taste profile here is actually refreshingly unique. More subtle and less in your face as compared to the power pack flavours that are inherent in many Singapore eateries these days. And that alone is the reason why this restaurant has been my family's favourite for so many years. 
So thanks for watching another episode of Great Speed Eats by Ichu the whole of Singapore. If you like this episode, give it a like, subscribe, comment below and turn on the notifications bell. And I'll see you in the next one for more eating. Bye-bye.